This is Christine Cope, Holistic Physical Therapist, here with Mariah from Pain Free Fitness. And we just used the hip hook on Mariah because yes. she had tightness on her, her left side. And um, so she spent some time on the hip hook to release her iliacus which was pulling her pelvis into an anterior rotation on that side. And she'd been having some issues with that hip for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then we checked to make sure her pelvis was in alignment and, and it actually was just mm -hmm. using the hip hook. If it wasn't, I would have recommended that she did a realignment exercise, which I talk about in my book, um, that will help give the pelvis into alignment. So it's really important that the muscles around the core are nice and relaxed and healthy and supple and the pelvis is in good alignment before initiating an exercise program. Mm -hmm. um, and those of us that have had tightness in that area or have had pelvic rotations for a long time, we need to train our muscles mm -hmm. how to hold this new alignment and this new happy hip flexor pelvic way of life mm -hmm. <laughs> we want to learn we want to teach our bodies how to hold that in in alignment and by by doing some exercises after we get everything in place and happy yeah so mariah's going to share um some some of her favorite things to to do after you have achieved those steps yeah. and i'm gonna i'm gonna get to demonstrate yes <laughs> yes so there's um one universal exercise that I pretty much have all of my clients do, and it is especially helpful for people with low back and with hip issues, pretty much any lower body issues, <laughs> I will have everybody do this because it's great for body awareness and all that as well, and there's a lot of different things we can do with it, and that is the pelvic tilt, my favorite <laughs> favorite exercise of all time. All my clients are like, oh no, <laughs> she goes with it's the pelvic one. tilt again. So with the pelvic tilt, I'll go through probably like four different variations that you can do just with this movement, but you're gonna start laying on your back just like Christine is right here, and she's got pretty much a perfect position. Depending on your anatomy, some people have longer legs than others. Um, you might feel a little more comfortable with your feet closer, with your feet further away, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that and how that changes things in just a few minutes here. But with the pelvic tilt, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is just have Christine practice breathing. So we're gonna do what's called the 360 breath. So what I want her to do is kind of take a big breath in and you wanna feel your rib cage even pushing into the mat, just all your rib cage expand and then release. And we'll do like two more of those, a nice big breath in. Good. Nice. And then last one, full rib cage expanding, really thinking about making that O shape with the ribs. And breathe out. Beautiful. The next progression from here is on the very last portion of the exhale. So when she's just finished that, finishing that breathe out, I'm going to have her pull her belly button back down towards her spine. So inhale, exhale and then pull the belly button back and you feel your core kind of engaged there. Mm -hmm. And then you hold and let it go. Let's do one more of those. A big breath in, exhale, as much air out as you can. Pull the belly button back. Beautiful, good. So once you can feel your core engage from that belly button in position, we can start with the actual pelvic tilt. Now, all that she's really gonna do is if you just really lightly push your heels into the floor, just lightly, you can feel your glutes kick in there. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna use that a tiny, tiny bit, but what she's actually doing is just gonna push the lower back into my hand. So kind of try to pin my hand down to the floor. Beautiful, yep. So as you can see, she is posteriorly tilting her hips when she does that. Yep, so just kind of tipping the bowl backwards. And we want to make sure that on each rep, what she's doing beautifully, she has that belly button pulled in. We're getting those full breaths in every couple of reps if we can, just to make sure that we are keeping that core engaged. Let's do one more pelvic tilt. Hold. Beautiful. Good. So some people are just going to stay there. 
For others, there's a lot of interesting things that we can do with the pelvic tilt. So the first one would be kind of working the outer hip muscles along with this. And I like to do this with a band. I'm just gonna use my hands for kind of the input here, but I will just wrap a band around the knees and have the client just hold out lightly on it. So let's do that same thing. So just pelvic tilt. And then with about 20% of your strength, drive out against my hands. Beautiful. Good, hold, three, two, one. Good, one more. Good, and drive out. Beautiful. I can really Good. see how this, this is really helping me yeah. to co-contract and utilize all of the muscles around my core, which I really feel is very stabilizing and also engaging that gluteus medius, which is very yes. important yes. for hip stability and pelvic stability when you have a lot of, instability even in your tailbone your hip your yeah. lower spine having that muscle be really strong and not necessarily just strong I know you talk about this a lot the difference between strength and stability yeah but really being able to work mm -hmm. and do its job mm -hmm. to hold things in place yeah you know in this in this neutral position so I think it's great I love that you that you add that in yeah yeah absolutely and there's actually um there's a group of muscles as well on the inside called the adductors, which are super important in stabilizing the pelvis, mm -hmm. which I think are neglected a lot of the time. And what we can do with that is I can just have her kind of really lightly squeeze in against the ball and do the same thing. So pelvic tilt and with like 20% of your strength, just use that squeeze in. And you can feel how that kind of engages. And if with some people, when they do this and they're super out of alignment, they'll actually get like a little sacrum adjustment out of that. It's like, oh, <laughs> that, that was yeah. really nice. So we have that tool to use as well. And then other variations that you can do, you can do a bunch of things with the pelvic tilt and with the glute bridge. But if you just kind of lift one foot off the ground, Yep, and then you do the pelvic tilt from here. So you are just doing that movement with one leg up. Beautiful, yep, we can hold a pelvic tilt. So just kind of hold the lower back into the ground and then kind of take this heel and slide it along the ground toward the wall. Beautiful, and then hold and then bring it back. Yeah, good. So really kind of doing some movements to strengthen kind of the hip flexors and lengthen the hip flexors while holding that pelvic tilt and stabilizing through there. The goal, good, go ahead, you can relax, sorry. Just making you do this forever. These are hard <laughs> exercises so good. too, I know. So the goal is that you want to, when you are holding in a pelvic tilt, you actually want to disassociate. So you want to hold this in position, like just keep it super rock solid and still. And then you can do your leg raises, you can do your heel slides, um, you can do your squeezes in and out. There's things that we can do to get the upper body involved too. But that's those are kind of the, the basic stabilization exercises and that's the way that I would normally have a client um, progress that movement as well. You know, yeah. I think it's really important to, and like, I'm so glad that she's sharing this, yeah. these, these foundational pieces. It's really important to master these foundational pieces um, to really teach these muscles how to work around these joints. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she is just such a master on figuring out which each individual needs to progress that or even to modify this, you yeah. know, in ways if you have particular issues, if you've got back pain, tailbone pain, or this isn't working for you, you can't quite get it, or there's some, you know, difficulty with it. Yeah. Um, you know, this is just the beginning and I would really encourage you just to seek out her expertise. <laughs> She's such a whiz when it comes to this. Thank I, you. you know, I really appreciate that um, because there's there's so much more, so many more directions that this can can right. go. Um, but I'm glad that you were able to share this because you know once people get their pelvises in alignment and the, and their hip flexors are relaxed, those muscles need to be retrained, you mm -hmm. know, and and how to hold in that new position. Um, and this, yeah. this exercise is, is a great foundation for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You gotta maintain it. I think the biggest thing with pain and injuries is that for some people can just have an injury once and be done with it. And I'm very jealous. <laughs> but for a lot of people, if you don't keep a really close eye and you don't maintain these practices, like 
at least semi-regularly, pretty much forever. You have a risk of injuries that bounce around forever, just kind of find different places in the body or just keep reoccurring. So doing things like this is a good way to keep everything in check. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for sharing. <laughs>